Hey everybody, this is Andrea from the Williston Community Library and I am here today to teach you all about bullet journaling. This is a beginner's guide to how to start your very own bullet journal. Hopefully you have all of your supplies that you need uh, and the kits that you picked up from the library. If you are from out of town watching this or you weren't able to get a kit, everything you need is probably going to be right in your kitchen drawer or your office. And we'll talk about those coming up here in just a few minutes. So as always, if you have any questions, concerns, you're not sure about something, go ahead and give us a call here at the library. We're hoping that this video is such, such a success that we will be able to do monthly videos or maybe even weekly on different types of layouts for your bullet journal. And we'll talk about those more here in just a few minutes. So let's go ahead and get going. Okay, let's get started. In front of me, I have the kit that you all should have received from the library. If you are from out of town or you weren't able to pick up a kit, this will actually show you what you need. It's probably all things that you have in your home. So let's go ahead and get started and we'll dissect this and talk about all the tools inside. So we're gonna go ahead and open this up and you are going to find, like I said earlier, really basic tools that you're going to need to just first basically start bullet journaling. Grab these out of here. Okay, so first we put a really cool City of Williston sticker just in case you wanted to maybe slap that baby on your on your bullet journal somewhere. It's just kind of cool. They also work on car windows as well, so we put that in there for you. Um, then of course you're going to need your journal. So we just bought these off of uh, offline and they came in packs of six. They were very inexpensive. They are a smaller version and the reason we did this is it's kind of going to be like a test to see if it's something you really want to do. Uh, a normal bullet journal you can get pretty much anywhere. Um, big box store, local uh, supply store, local bookstore. They're going to have them from anywhere from probably five up to I mean, it depends on how fancy you want to get, but usually about $5 to $10 is the area that you're going to be. You're going to get a couple more pages. I prefer the dot grid, uh, which is what we have here. A lot of people prefer uh, the graph, or if you have neither of these and you just have something with lined paper, something like this, this could work as well, but we're going to use this today. And I like the craft paper because then I can design it uh, the way I want. I'm not worried about um, having to buy stickers or maybe having, you know, uh, a surface that I can't write on. So bullet journal, obviously number one. Uh, then you need a um, journaling pen. And these, again, are just something that we bought offline. Um, very, very inexpensive, but these can get fancy as well. Uh, you could just use a Sharpie. That's actually normally what I use is just a black fine tip Sharpie, but these look kind of neat. So we bought these for you guys and it's just a fine tip felt marker. If you don't have one of these, you can always just use a black pen. Okay, then in your kit, you also are going to get a highlighter and I just think highlighters are fun. They come in all different colors nowadays. Um, my favorite brand of highlighter, let me see if I can find one here, is actually also Sharpie brand. And they look something like this. Um, I like them for a few reasons. A, they come in really cool colors. B, you can see when your um, ink is running out and I just really like uh, the tip of them. So. And you can also, you know, wear them on a lanyard if you need to. So these are the kind that I really like, and you can find these pretty much anywhere. But for today's purposes, you're getting one of these bad boys. And everybody's kit is going to differ, so you might not have the exact color that I have in, in the kit that I'm using, but you get the point. Then we threw in a wonderful, excuse me, Williston Community Library pencil. Um, this is just good to have in case you're like me and you like to sketch before you actually put the, the black over the sketching. Um, if you're going to be doodling or um, drawing lines or anything like that, pencil is good to have. And we even pre-sharpen them for you. So there's your pencil. Uh, then comes the fun part. Uh, we threw in four different color pens for you. Uh, and again, everybody's kit kind of differed. And these were just some some pens that we found, you know, fairly inexpensive. 
again just like with everything else if you're an office office supply stationary person like me you know that there are all kinds of pens and markers and all kinds of things that you can pick up anywhere but again these were just really inexpensive but they're really fun colors and uh, I think you guys will like these then these two things these these two rolls you might be wondering what the heck are these so these are actually the washi tape that we talked about in um, the initial advertisement and again washi tape can come in all different forms um, these are just some that we actually had left over from like uh, two summer readings ago so we were like hey let's use these they're super cute they're fun um, I use them more for decoration than for actual purpose but you got you have two rolls of those uh, another washi tape that I like to use is um, like this and it's more like uh, almost like a masking tape type. This is more, uh, and you could probably write on this with a marker. These not so much just because it has that glossy finish. But those are the ins and outs of your kit. So again, you have your journal, your sticker, your four colored pens, your highlighter, your black journaling pen, your pencil, and your two rolls of washi tape. So now you know your supplies, you know what you need. Let's get started making our journal. All right, so if you're anything like me, I like to see a preview of what I'm going to be making before I actually make it. It kind of helps uh, me get my head wrapped around things before we get started. So I actually made a cheat sheet, if you will, of what we're going to be doing. I did it on larger paper, um, so that way it was easy to see. I just printed out some of this dot paper here and I wanted to show you what we're going to be working on for this video. So the first thing we're going to need is we're going to need an index and this is going to be in the front page of our bullet journal here and we will go through it together but for right now I want to show you the what of what we're going to be doing. So you need an index page, right? So I just drew some nice squiggly lines here. I used the word index in all capital letters and then outlined it in the highlighter. You do not have to be artsy fartsy to do bullet journaling. However, a lot of artsy fartsy people do happen to enjoy bullet journaling because it lets them be artsy fartsy, but I don't want that to Im intimidate you. So I used very simple um, doodles and things like that as we're going through. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna need an index. And what I want you to do is you're going to number your pages as you go. That is so important because your index is actually what is going to help you figure out where things are in your bullet journal. So number one is your index and you're actually going to make it a couple of pages. So we're going to do page one through four is your index. One through four. One, two, three, four. So this should where your index should start. So now we're on the key, right? So this is your key. This is what is going to, if you're using it as like a planner or not necessarily as a planner, but when you're putting like tasks and things like that in your journal, you're going to need some kind of system as to how it's going to work. So we have a symbol for tasks, a symbol for events, appointments, notes, if you migrated it to move it somewhere else, if it was scheduled, if you completed it, or finally if you canceled. I'm very much a color coder, so I used color coats also to make my tasks here. So again, we numbered the page. So that's the, that's the second thing we're going to do. Then we have what's called our future log. And again, we numbered. So our future log is just going to tell us the next six months, it's actually going to be a two page spread. It's going to be the next six months looking ahead. So I'm starting with October because September is, you know, halfway over by the time we're watching this video. So I've got October, November, December, January, February, March. Now this is going to tell me in a quick spread what is happening in these next six months. So I'm going to, I'm going to put, uh, you know, Halloween in here, if I have any plans for that, maybe a Thanksgiving get together, Christmas if we're doing anything, um, appointments I may have lined up, maybe my dog is going to get groomed, things like that are gonna, are gonna live in this future log. And this is just a quick overview of what's happening in these next six months. And I have my pages numbered again, because again, we wanna make sure when we're in the actual bullet journal, we can go back to that index 
and see that, okay, six and seven, that's where my future log is. So that's our future log. And do you see how I'm kind of keeping with the same easy theme here? Just a couple doodles, do some highlights, no big deal. So we're gonna go to the next page and that's going to be our monthly. So again, it's a two page spread. So this is our monthly spread right here. And a spread is just two pages of something together. So here we are. Uh, October is over on this side and then I have instead of a, a grid like a normal agenda would have I've kind of split it up a little differently so I have my personal items here right with the days numbered and then the days of the week and then if I have any significant um, items going on that day so I have a baby shower, Halloween is here and then over in this column I've made some space that says work or professional um, so that's a little different to me so work is going to be this pink color and that's anything that has to do with the library and then professional is like if I'm on a board or if I'm volunteering for something anything like that um, that has to do it's not really work it is personal but it just kind of helps me designate so anything professional so I'm on the James um, board of directors so I'm putting that meeting here and that's going to help me. So this kind of breaks down uh, what I'm going to be doing in the month. And then if I have any tasks that I need to get done, any goals that I'm trying to achieve, or just any notes that I may uh, need to jot something down, that's what this column is for here. So tasks, this is where I'm going to go back and reference the key that I made, or maybe even here I would use it, um, but there's not a lot of room here, so I'd probably be more apt to use it here. But this is where I'm going to use this thing. So if I have any things I need to do, okay, I'm going to use that little circle here and put um, that I have to email the president for um, to add something to the agenda or I need to get the packet together for the board meeting to email it. So those are going to be tasks. Events would be uh, this baby shower here. So that would be an event. So I could put that the little triangle here next to there. Um, if I completed something, you know, once I complete that that um, packet is done, I could put my little X there. That's what these are for. These are in coordination with this page here. Goals would be, let's say I want to, um, you know, do 30 minutes of exercise every day or 150 minutes of um, exercise a week, which is a goal I have uh, with some friends. And I would put that here. And then if I completed that, I would put that X next to it. And the notes would just be anything I wanted to write down. It could be something I needed to remember, something I wanted to, um, you know, a program maybe for the library, uh, something I need to, to tell Bailey, uh, my daughter, maybe um, grocery list, anything I want to make there. And again, these are just really basic um, layouts that I'm going to teach you. Once you get the hang of this, there are so many different options and we actually might make this um, a monthly tutorial where I teach you more things every time. I'm, I'm not sure how that's going to work yet, but anyway, and then, um, so that's it. So these are the main things that we're going to work on during this video because I don't want it to be too horribly long. So this is kind of a rundown again of what we're doing. These were my like cheater pages. And so now what we're going to do is we're actually going to crack open this bullet journal and we're going to transform these pages into here to get you started on your bullet journaling adventures. All right, let's get started working in your actual bullet journal. So I'm going to start with my pencil and I'm going to put my name on my journal. Uh, and it's probably a good idea to maybe put your name, email address on the inside in case you were to ever lose it. Um, that's usually a good thing to do, but I'm going to start with my pencil, and I don't know how to do calligraphy, but I do know how to write my name in cursive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in pencil, and then I'm going to cheat an outline in my black liner pen here. You can see that I'm not exactly where I'm supposed to be, but that's okay because what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and on the down strokes here, I'm going to fill in and make it look like I know some cool calligraphy. 
but I really don't. But we can just keep that between you, me, and the fence post. There we go. It doesn't have to be perfect. And now you know my secret. I don't really know any fancy writing. I just backfill it with this little black pen. And again, you can always use a big fat black marker if you want. We're just gonna use this for today. There we go. All right, and that's all I'm gonna do to the front for right now. And then if you really wanted to, you could go back and erase the pencil lines, but we'll save that for another day. So then on the inside again, you might wanna put your name and email just in case. Um, but let's get started. So that first page is going to be that index again. So if you want, use that handy dandy pencil you have and write the word index. And I'm going to count one, two, three dots. That's how big I want my letters. I want my letters three dots high. And so now I'm going to go back over that with that black fine tip point. Another trick that I've learned is that if you don't have, if your pages aren't really thick and you have a really thick marker, um, sometimes they will bleed into the other page so you can put a piece of paper under them um, if you want. But this one's actually okay, it's not bleeding to the other side, but just another trick. And then we're going to make those cool little swirly lines. So literally all I did was make some loop de loos. I'm going to make them a little different this time. And that's, that's all I'm doing, just making some crazy loops there, right? So there's our index. Uh, they kind of look like Christmas lights, actually. And then what we need to do is we need to make a column for page, and we need to make a column for topic. So uh, another cool tool you could have is just a little ruler. I don't necessarily want it because I don't like my lines super duper straight. I like them to look kind of funky. So I'm just going to use my pen here and go across these lines. I'm going to leave two dots here and I'm going to leave two dots here. And then I'm just going to start with this dot and work my way down and I'm going to leave two dots there. So now we're going to write page and I really like to write in all capital letters. Just I don't know why, I just do. And so now we have our page number and our topic. And again if you wanted to go back it's had time to dry. You can erase that pencil mark. Bada bing, bada boom. Then we can go over it with your highlighter or a colored pen. I'm going to use my purple pen here and just kind of make a weird outline of the other line. There we go. And then just gonna kind of shadow the words, the letters, that make a word. There we go. So there's my index. And remember, the most important part, number your pages. And so we've got index page one. We're going to flip to page two, page three, and page four. Now, what I would do normally, but I'm not going to because we're in the essence of time, I would actually go through and do index over here, index over here, and index over here, and I would probably use um, different color pens, but I would use the same, the same style that I used here. So there's our index. So now we can put page one through four is our index. Boom, there you go. Look at that, first page done. Down and in the books. All right, so the next page, if you remember, is going to be our key. And we're going to use the same idea for our layout. 
So I'm going to go back here and reference that I went one, two, three, four, five dots down is where I started my line here. Now you don't have to be this uh, symmetrical if you want, if you don't want, but I, I do. It just makes my life happy. And then I'm two dots down to write key and then three dots high. So two dots down, three dots high. Here we go. So one, two. So we're going to write key or whatever you want to call it. Key seems to fit though. And then I'm going to outline that in black. And again, I'm going to give it those weird, swoopy, cool lines that look like Christmas lights. I just really like those. And you could probably even just color those in if you wanted. And then this time I'm going to use pink and outline those lines, the letters. And same thing here, just kind of whoop. There we go. If you really wanted to get funky, you could probably even, I don't know, use the highlighter to go over them as well. Add a little more pop there. Okay, so now we have to decide what we want for our key. So going off of what we did earlier, we're going to use the circle dot for task. We're going to use the open circle for event. We're going to use the triangle and see how I'm staying in that same line for appointment. Then we're going to use a dash for notes and the, what is, one is that? That's the less than, right? Migrated. And I guess it's whatever you want to call it. The opposite way. Scheduled. I guess this is the more than, this is the less than. Okay, and then complete is the X. And canceled is the task dot. with the line through it. Okay. And then remember the color coding. So we're going to do purple is personal. Whatever color you designate. And pink is work. Should have did green because work means money. And green is professional. Oh. Yeah, these pens have a little dot on the top, so don't forget to take those off. Oh, professional. Okay. Boom. Okay, so our key is done. Now, just because I am a little doodler, I'm going to go ahead and doodle the bottom here because I know that I'm not going to have anything written down there. And then I'm going to go back with that pink pen. I'm just going to kind of copycat what I did at the top. And go through with my yellow highlighter. Just kind of lazily. There. All right. And again, most important part, number your page. So we're going to put a five there. And we're going to go back to the index and put that page five is our all right, look at that. We are on our way. So the next page, page is, is actually going to be our future log. So this is that six month um, overview of what our life is going to look like. So we're going to start with our pencil again and write out the words future log. And you can kind of see my uh, outline from here. So it helps me cheat a little bit. So I'm going to go two down and write future log, three dots long.
and on the example I know that I wrote it on both pages but I'm not gonna do that on this one I'm just gonna continue my little swirl across so here we go I'm gonna make our little loop de loo and just keep going across the page and then start over here and we're gonna trace it feature log Okay, and now we need to write our months in there. So we're gonna let this dry for a minute before we go over it with color. And we're gonna try to eyeball figuring out three months in there. Now you might wanna go ahead and count your dots and figure out what exactly is a third of the page. I'm not that interested in doing that, so I'm just gonna kind of do it myself here. So I'm going to make some more of those squiggly lines. I'm going to make another one here. Okay, and I'm going to continue over on the same side of this page. I really like these pens, these are awesome. Alright, so now I've got my layout cut into six pieces. So, uh, like I said, we're going to start with October. And we're going to write that here, staying in one line. And then we're going to move on throughout the months for the next six months. And, and I'm trying to line up from one page to the next. February. Wow, I can't believe these are the next six months. And March. All right, and there we go. So there's our future log. I'm gonna go ahead and take my eraser and erase my pencil marks here. Get rid of them. And now I'm gonna use my blue, because I haven't used that yet. And that's gonna be my future log color. This really pretty not, I don't know if it's really teal, like a crystal blue maybe. And just go over these here. And I'm gonna switch it up a little bit and use a green on this guy. And see, I am literally just doodling on the page. I'm not really taking my time, just kind of going with the flow. And then I'm gonna actually use the pink to outline the months. Or another thing you could do is take your highlighter and just strike through the month names like I did there. That's kind of cool too. Or if you had a different color marker you could use. So there is our future log. And don't forget to number your pages. So our last page was five. So now we're on six and seven over here. And we're gonna go back to our uh, index and write six through seven is our... So page six and seven are now our future log. Future log. Okay, so next we're going to go to our monthly spread page. So we're going from our future log, and this is our last one that we're gonna do together today, our monthly spread. So we're gonna start with October because like October is right around the corner. And this time I'm going to write October in, ah, I'm going to go ahead and keep it over here. So again, we're going two down, three high, but I'm going to kind of start in the middle. October. There we go. Grab my pen. And trace the letters. All right. 
right, and we're gonna start our little doodles again. Do the same thing and just continue it over to this page. There we go, all right. So, up here, we're going to call it tasks, goals, notes, and this is going to be our monthly grid. So let's start with the tasks, goals, notes, because that's a little bit easier. So again, we're gonna kinda split this page into thirds, so I'm going to use my little outline I can see in the back here as my guide, and I'm going to split this up. Do my funky doodles. And we're calling this side tasks, and I'm gonna write over here this time, goals. And notes. There we have that. And then on this side, we're going to make our monthly grid. So the only thing you have to make sure is that you have enough room for as many days there are in the month. So in October, there's 31. So I'm going to start here and just work my way down. Four, five, go kind of fast on this one. So I'm making sure that I'm staying in that same line here and writing small enough that it doesn't go out of the line but neat enough that I can still read my handwriting. Oh, and look at that. It doesn't go all the way down. So we're going to improvise. We're going to go 26. I should have counted before I started. And we're going to do 27. 28, 29, 30, and 31. And then next to that, we're going to write the day of the week. So to save space over here, we're actually gonna write it down here this time. So the 1st of October is a Thursday. So we're gonna start with a T. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Wednesday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. There we go. And I want to um, grid this off. So we're going to start here and go all the way across. And then we're going to... Mm, do I want to put a grid down there? Yeah, probably. So we're going to put a grid here first to get off those numbers. And then we'll put one here to get off these numbers. And then I'm actually going to switch it up and cut it off here. Keep going down. There we go. So now this can be an empty space for whatever we want it to be. So we're going to make a little doodle line here. And we're going to call this doodles. And then I can draw some cute little Halloween doodles in there. I'm going to cut this one off too here. Okay. So that's where we're gonna leave that one today. Uh, let's erase our pencil lines here and green for October because it's kind of a spooky, slimy color. We're gonna outline here and we're gonna do the same thing. Here and here. And then I'm going to take the purple and outline my letters. Green and purple are my favorite colors. These are going to be my doodles. And so there you have it. There is our monthly layout. So don't forget to, I almost did to number your pages. So we're on seven, now we're on eight. 
and 9. And we're going to take those over to our index. 8 and 9. I'm going to write October. And I kind of want to highlight that. And this is where your washi tape comes into play. Um, and this is actually a functional way to use washi tape, not like I said, a decorative way. But um, you could like put the washi tape on the top or you know the side. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use it as a functional purpose and put it on the side of my planner. So that way I know my journal rather. So that way I know that that means there's a month in there. So I'm just going to cut off a little piece of my washi tape and I'm going to stick some of it here and then I'm going to flip this page over and fold it over on itself. So now when I close my journal I know that that is a month. Now you could, if you want it to, um, get it right on the edge. I, I kind of like that it sticks out a little bit. It looks funky to me because then you'll have a little tabs going through. But there you go. So we made our very first uh, nine pages of our bullet journal. And be sure to be on the lookout for our next video where we will talk about some different kinds of layouts you can do. You guys have a great day. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.